freight fans. Barky Dog here, back with something a bit different this time. See, way back when I was a little pup, on Saturday afternoons, I used to watch the Creature Double Feature on Channel 56 out of Boston. Ah, uh, some great memories there. See, what they do is show two creature movies back to back. They didn't just show the cheap, schlocky William Castle or Roger Corman pictures, no. They had stuff from Japan, Hammer Horror, they had the Universal Monster Movies too. The pair of movies usually had something in common. Maybe two Godzilla movies, or two Gamera ones, or two flying saucer pictures, or two Frankensteins, or Wolfmans. That's how I was introduced to a lot of the classic monsters and sci-fi pictures, and I've loved those movies ever since. Other UHF stations around the country ran a creature double feature too, because the movies were a syndicated package or something, but Channel 56 kinda pioneered the creature double feature. That's the one I watched. I still remember that spooky theme song. I'm gonna link you to a video where a guy talks about the creature double feature in more detail, and I feel the same way about it that he does. Anyway, since I mostly review movies on my channel, I thought I'd go ahead and do my own version. Barky's Creature Double Feature. <laughs> Maybe I should save this for Halloween, but what the heck, I'm gonna do it now. For my first Creature Double Feature, I figure nothing says creepy creature like spiders. Man, I hate those things. Ew. Maybe in a past life I was a fly and got caught in a spider's web or something. Ew. Hate, hate spider. Ew. But these two pictures don't give me the creeps the way a spider normally would because they're both in black and white and they actually use tarantulas which move kind of slow. In the movie, anyway. Plus, unlike movies today, they aren't really gory. Both of these movies feature giganticism, a craze in the 1950s and 60s monster movies, usually due to radioactive fallout or toxic waste or an unethical scientist's tinkering, insects and other creatures grow to ginormous size and threaten the world. Here, it's spiders. First in our matchup of spooky spiders is Tarantula from 1955. This one was put out by Universal, who were the go-to studio for all things monster. John Agar stars as a doctor trying to solve a mystery that crops up. See, the movie opens with a guy wandering around the desert in his pajamas. He's been horribly disfigured and promptly croaks. Agar is called in on the case, but he can't figure it. Meanwhile, there's this guy, a professor working on a special nutrient that makes things grow. He's a noble scientist, but he's gone too far. So we see giant guinea pigs, mice, and bunny rabbits. Careful, don't let any kids in there. Remember Night of the Lepus? And for some reason, a tarantula. Why? Why would you give this stuff to a tarantula? They're predators. Plus, why even test the nutrient out on these things in the first place? Their blood chemistry is totally different than mice and other mammals like humans, but he does anyway. Now he's got a giant ass tarantula in his house. Ugh. Well, the dead guy in pajamas had a connection to this scientist, and we see his assistant show up who is also disfigured. Turns out that's what this nutrient stuff does to humans. Well, the assistant battles the scientist in the lab, destroying everything, and in the struggle, the tarantula escapes. 
Way to go, assistant dude. But before he croaks, the assistant jabs the prof with a syringe full of the stuff so he'll croak too. While he's waiting, he needs to hire a new assistant. That's why this cute chick comes to town, and the doctor naturally wants to start playing doctor. If you know what I mean. Anyway, more deaths start piling up as the tarantula kills cattle, people, you name it, leaving pools of a milky substance behind. Doc Agar consults a scientist who identifies the milky substance as tarantula venom. Eventually, the giant tarantula reveals itself, and the battle is on. They call in the Air Force, leading to an early appearance by this guy. That's right, Clint Eastwood. You can tell it's him by the squinty eyes. Overall, I really like this one. You can see the uh, spider-eye view as the tarantula approaches his victims, which is pretty cool. And I like how the tarantula sort of creeps over from behind the hills. Agar is good as the doctor. He starred in a lot of schlocky movies and was mercilessly razzed by the MST3K guys. So people forget he started out doing straight drama. In fact, he starred opposite John Wayne in The Sands of Iwo Jima, arguably the height of his career. But appearing in all of these B-movie schlockers has given him a degree of immortality. Besides Agar, the scientist is played by Leo G. Carroll, a fine actor who had a long career. And if you look fast, you'll spot Bing Russell. I think that's him. He's a townsman, anyway. He played the saloon patron who got gunned down in Rio Bravo. He was also Kurt Russell's dad. Next, from 1958, is The Spider, also known as Earth vs. The Spider. That was a lame attempt to glom on to some of the cachet from Earth vs. The Flying Saucers, released two years earlier. This one was knocked out by American International, and it's a fairly low-budget affair meant to appeal to teenagers. There aren't really any famous names here, although the janitor at the school was played by Hank Patterson. He appeared in many character parts over the years, so he may look familiar. Our story opens with a dad driving home in his pickup truck. He has a special birthday present for his daughter, but he never makes it home, and the daughter is worried. But the dad has been known to go on benders, so the girl's boyfriend doesn't think there's any cause for alarm. She disagrees. These two are a match made in heaven. She's kind of a needy biatch, and he's kind of lazy and whiny that's got to be pushed into doing everything. Yeah. They borrow their 35-year-old fellow teenager's car to go looking for the dad after school. They find his wrecked truck and the present, which is a bracelet, but they don't find the dad. Seeing a big old sign not to enter a cave, they go ahead and enter it anyway. Eventually, they find dead guys, and the girl falls into a big cargo net, I mean, spider web. Then, the spider reveals itself and chases the kids away. They report to the cops, who think it's a joke, so they turn to the local science teacher who gets the cops to investigate the caves and bring along a bunch of DDT just in case. They find the dad drearily desiccated and doornail dead. Then they confront the giant spider. This cop thought it was all a joke before. Not so funny now when you're caught in a cargo net, is it, deputy dumbass? Well, they hose the spider down with DDT and the local science teacher wants to preserve it for science. They haul the spider into the school auditorium, which is the only place in town large enough to keep it, apparently. But the girl is gone and lost her bracelet when fleeing from the spider. Being a girl, she emotionally blackmails the boyfriend and strong arms him into going out to the cave with her to find the bracelet. They borrow their 35-year-old fellow teenager's car and start looking around. 
Meanwhile, said 35-year-old teenager and his band are rehearsing for the big dance, and a bunch of other kids wander in and start dancing. All this noise is enough to wake the dead. Spider, that is. Apparently, the DDT only stunned it, so it breaks out of the auditorium and goes for a stroll around town, killing people and wrecking stuff. Then it wanders back into the cave. They plan to seal the cave off with dynamite, but the kids are trapped inside with the giant spider. In this one, they never really say why the spider is so big. Maybe toxic pollution or radiation. Maybe it was just a prehistoric monster that woke up. Who knows? And although Bill is being shot in Carlsbad caverns, it really mostly wasn't. They had some stills of the stalagmites and stuff and used those to make process shots of people and the spider running around in the cave. That's how you see the caves most of the time. Although a cheap production, I did like how they made the spider leg. All those hairs are just straw from household brooms, spray painted black. But they really look like spider hair. Yeah. And the boyfriend works at the local theater, so the studio snuck in some other monster movie advertising. That was a nice touch. So in one case, science gone wrong. Although the scientist wasn't really evil. And in the other, a prehistoric monster reawakened and facing teeny boppers. Of the two, Tarantula is definitely superior. The story is a bit stronger, and the effects are a little better too. Still, both are good sci-fi spider schlockers to enjoy on a Saturday afternoon creature double feature. The Spider and Tarantula are both available on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and digitally from Amazon Prime. That's it for this one, Fright Fans. I'll see you in the next video.